did not come to fruition because that just was not your opportunity. And so sometimes in an effort to embrace vulnerability, we have to really acknowledge our truth and whatever your truth is own it because it's your truth and you have the power to determine how you narrate your story. I also want you to take accountability for your actions. Where in your life have you made a right when you were supposed to be making a left? Has anybody ever put in the wrong directions on your GPS and you ended up at a de destination that was not intended for you to be? Have you ever taken a detour? What detours in life have you done? What detours in your life have you made um, that if you could go back and do it again, you possibly would make another turn? And so we have to take accountability for our actions. But oftentimes, as it relates to taking accountability, we have to be vulnerable. We have to unleash ourselves. We have to come to terms with the person that is staring back in us and staring back to us in the mirror. Sometimes you have to also defy the odds. The obstacles of life are going to be against you. They're going to happen. Life is happening. I think COVID showed us, COVID-19 showed us that we are all, nobody, nobody is exempt from life happening, right? And we can all... Uh, be caught up in chaos and, and uncertainty in the midst of a blink in the midst of the blink of an eye. And so you have to have a made up mind and determination that you are going to de defy the odds by any means necessary. I don't care what it is. I am. I will defy the odds because that is the decision that I have made. You also have to stop looking backwards. I don't know about you all, but my family says that I can drive. I think I do a pretty good job of driving and knock on wood, I have not had any accidents. But one thing I know for certain is that I cannot get to my destination driving if I am steadily looking backwards. So I want you to stop looking backwards. I want you to stop looking at the things of the past. I want you to stop focusing on what should have, could have, would have been, what didn't happen, how it happened, all of the facts. And I want you to focus your mind and set your attention on faith and forward so that you can get to where it is that you need to get to because as long as you are continuing to look backwards you are delaying your destiny and so if you're anything like me you have somewhere to be and you have a short time to get there so stop looking backwards because be looking backwards will only um, deter you from getting to where you need to be in a timely manner and you need to get to where you need to get to because somebody is waiting to experience the greatness that lives on the inside of you my last um a suggestion or topic tip for embracing vulnerability to unleash greatness is simply for you to be kind to yourself we work in um, areas and for corporations where it's a fast rapid moving pace something is always happening being an agile leader you have to switch and pivot and be quick on your toes and your mind is always boggled down with what it is that you have to do and you're probably having dreams at night about how you have to reverse engineer your project in Python or <laughs> in R or whatever system you are using all of the things right or your project management and all of the above and so I want you I admonish you I am employ you to be kind to yourself. I beg of you to show yourself some grace. I beg of you to show yourself the same kind of grace that you would show to somebody who was limping into the hospital or somebody that you see who was injured on the side of the road. I encourage you to remind yourself on a daily, maybe even an hour basis, that you too are human and that you too deserve the grace and the space to be. You too deserve the grace and the space to be in full um, touch with how you feel, with the beat of your heart, with everything that is happening around you when you're feeling overwhelmed and when anxiety is knocking on your front door. I encourage you to be kind to yourself because guess what? We can't go out there in this big old world and expect that other people will be kind to us if we're not demonstrating grace and kindness to ourselves. And so I encourage you to take a look in the mirror and hug yourself. Um, did you know that people need like a minimum of 10 hugs a day to be healthy? I'm sure. So just just hug yourself because I'm sure that you're probably missing out. I'm sure you're probably hug deficient, if you will. And so be kind to yourself. And as you are being kind to yourself, I have learned that you are a lot more likely to be to demonstrate kindness towards other people. Next slide, please. This is some good stuff. I hope you all are enjoying it. I want you all to get clear about what it is that you want. 
I want you to get clear about what it is that you want. Sometimes you have to silence the noise. Sometimes you have to silence the noise. You have to silence the chaos. Sometimes you just have to steal away. You have to steal away and you have to go and get what it is that you need to have in order to refill and in order to refresh your mind, heart, body, spirit, and soul. I don't know if you understood it, but my, my presentation is holistic. I'm not just concerned about you on the work side. I'm concerned about how you are meshing it all together, your heart, mind, body, and soul. Because if your heart, mind, body, and soul is not coming together, if it's not on one accord, if it's out of alignment, then every single thing, every other thing else in your life is going to be out of alignment. So I want you, I want to encourage you to take a minute and give yourself permission to be selfish. Now, I know you're looking back at this screen and saying, Dr. Baker, nobody ever encouraged me to be selfish. How dare you? I double dare you to be selfish. I double dare you to consider yourself. I double dare you to focus on you. I double dare you after you finish taking care of everybody else and tending to everybody else and making sure everybody else have them what they need. I double dare you to take care of yourself. I double dare you to set aside time for quiet time and to do something that you really enjoy and to, to tap into the heart, your heartbeat. I double dare you to be selfish. I double dare you to put yourself at the front of the line. I double dare you to put yourself as a top priority on your list. I double dare you. And I double dare you to decide to be the one who does not just allow life to happen to you. There are a lot of people that sit around with intentions and great plans. And then there are a lot of people that sit around and just wait on other people to make things happen. Don't you let that be you. Next slide, please. I encourage you to embrace discomfort. As you all remember, we're not too far removed from our experiences with COVID-19, right? And now we're back at a place where we're still, we're back wearing masks. And so if you all recognize, remember, wearing those masks are uncomfortable, right? Sometimes having the mask on for too long. I know for me, I had never really experienced bad acne, but once I started wearing that mask, I had acne everywhere. It was irritating my skin. And so sometimes in life, you have to embrace discomfort because wearing those masks saved many of our lives. No, being, being selfish isn't a bad thing at all, Jose. I am in total agreement with you. You have to embrace discomfort. And sometimes we have to get into those spaces and those places where it's not comfortable, where we are being stretched, where we are being pushed, where we are being pulled, where we are being, you know, uh, the we're, we're the pot, we're, we're, on, we're, we're the clay. So we're being molded so that we can really maximize our potential and so that our greatness can truly shine. You see, growth is uncomfortable, but in order to embrace your growth and in order to get to the place of expansion and increase that you desire and you deserve to achieve, you got to embrace the discomfort. If you're not willing to put yourself in a situation where you are uncomfortable, then you will never grow. You should never be the smartest person in the room. You should never be the smartest person at the table. You should never be the smartest person on your team. And so if you find yourself in those spaces, that means that it's time for you to grow. That means that it's time for you to move on, for you to turn the page. And so I want to encourage you all to be not afraid of discomfort. I want to encourage you to feel the fear and lean into it. I want to encourage